Hi everybody, this is Nino and today I want to show you my somewhat crude method of transferring data from my Convergent Technologies Workslate WK100 computer from 1984, <laughs> this is it, to my Linux laptop. Well, the issue with this cute little machine is that for all its beauty it is perfectly useless in most technological respects. First I was trying to save data on this cute little micro cassette player. It came even with an original cassette, but no dice here. This thing is defect. I disassembled it, changed the belt, which was tricky because this whole thing is made as if it's a giant trap to, to break, but still I handled it and it was all for nothing because it seems that the electromotor is not working well either. So all in all, I'm unfortunately unable to save anything on the microcassette. Next idea I was having was to uh, transfer data over its ports. It is having here some four ports this one being some proprietary port of the uh, manufacturer, a power port, but it is running out of four AA batteries, and two phone connectors. Yeah, no normal serial port here. So what do we do? Well, we create a fake phone line by plugging in a normal phone cable, RJ11 to RJ11, between a US robotics modem and the work slate, and we are powering it with 18 volt out of two AA batteries. So this gives us actually a working and powered phone line. The thing it is missing is unfortunately a dial tone. So somehow we need now to make a modem connection uh, between the Linux machine and the work slate. How are we going to go about it? Well, this thing does in fact have here a phone function, but it is incredibly capricious. I don't have a manual for this, so forgive me if I'm doing something in some primitive way, but this is simply the thing which was working actually. So there we're having this phone function, which you can access by pressing this nice button. And on Linux, well, first of all, I was, yeah, where is it? setting up the terminal. I hope you can read this. Yeah, so let's do that. And then I was connecting to the modem with Picocom. Here is my command line. I am not sure you can see this. Yeah, okay, so it is Picocom with 300 baud. It's a 300 baud modem. Uh, which doesn't say anywhere. I had to look up an 80s brochure to see this. No parity, eight data bits, no flow control. And yeah, I have there some send and receive commands, but I don't think they're doing here anything. And then the device TTY ACM0 for the US robotics modem. So let's do that. And in we are. Now, uh, I, I assume you, you know that modems are working with something called the um, Haze command set. We're going to write first ATE1, which you do not see presently, in order to activate echo. So you see actually anything you're typing. Okay, so we write AT, it answers okay. It's in general working. Next, we're going to set up the modem so that um, it is, <laughs> I copied here the command already, uh, so that it is going to connect uh, to the work slate. So I don't know whether you can read this clearly. It is AT and then E1, X0 and D0 and C0. So this we do. And now something interesting happened with the modem. Basically we turned off its various detections of um, uh, dial tones and so on. 
And now you're seeing that it's data transmission light, which was not lit before, is now actually lit as well. Uh, that's all in setup we needed. And now comes a phase which requires a little bit of luck, or actually quite a lot of luck. Like one out of six or seven cases is successful. I'll try it nevertheless though. Uh, how do I make this capricious 1980s thing connect to the modem? Well, I'm using a little bit of trickery. First of all, we're having here a speakerphone function and you can hear a soft humming after I activated it. I hope you can read the screen. I can try to adjust it a little bit. Uh, I think this is better visible now, right? Okay, so I just pressed this button to activate the speaker phone and now you can actually hear the Linux machine. So uh, there were various methods of doing this, but one which was now working is to say ATA, which is AT answer. So ATA will uh, wait for a connection to the modem and then answer it. And once we get that here, we will switch from the speaker phone, because we don't want to talk to a person, to the terminal function, which if you press it in the right moment, and that's trickery, I'm not sure I will, uh, will let you actually connect to the Linux machine. So, we are having the speaker phone, and now we're pressing Ata here. And now comes the fun part. Now we are whistling to the work slate because it has an active microphone and hoping that the Linux machine will connect. Oh, here we are. My bubbling has worked. We're pressing terminal. Now the terminal has been activated. We have a connect. That's awesome. And now I can say send. It is asking me to send its crummy uh, worksheet. I am saying do it, which is its version of enter. And it is indeed transmitting the worksheet information. So yeah, there we go. Uh, we are connected thereby from the terminal to the main computer. Now, if ATA is not working for you, then a way to do it is um, to give the work slate a, a, a loud whistle. You know, you do something like and this sounds sufficiently modem-like to actually trigger the ATA response and to allow you to connect. We can try that whole thing again. So I'm going to say hang up here. That's all nice and dandy. So here is again our worksheet. Okay. We are going to go to the phone function. We're going to turn on speaker phone. We're going to say ATA and now I'm going to whistle. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Sometimes you don't get a clear connect, but some form of crappy connection. And then you need to hang up on that and try it again. So, as I told you, <laughs> this is a bit of an experimental process. It didn't work out this time. It works like maybe one out of five or six times. And yeah, thank you for joining me here. And yeah, till the next time, I shall now clean up my mess. Goodbye.